next on News Channel 13 Live at 6. An historic building in Montgomery County is destroyed by fire, and one of the men fighting the blaze is now fighting for his life. A Massachusetts man is lucky to be alive after part of his truck fell from I-90 onto Broadway. And anyone else feeling lucky today is buying a Millennium Millions lottery ticket. Plus, a big winner at a local OTB and Lee's weekend forecast. News Channel 13 is next. From WNYT, Albany, this is News Channel 13, live at 6. Tonight's top story, a firefighter's job doesn't end when the flames are out. A Montgomery County man is in critical condition, injured after the fire. This is News Channel 13, live at 6. Good evening, I'm Kelly Lynch. The fire broke out in the Montgomery County town of Glen just before daybreak. But the real danger came after the fire was put out. Antoinette Biordi is in the newsroom now with the story. Antoinette. Kelly, the blaze was challenging enough. When firefighters got there early this morning, the building was fully involved. But they were never prepared for what was going to happen next. A cinder block wall came tumbling down, trapping four volunteer firefighters. Firefighters worked hard into the morning hours to put out the fire here at the intersection of Highway 30A and Route 161 in the town of Glen. And just when they were finishing up, another tragedy. The intensity of the fire caused a 20-foot cinder block wall to fall on top of four firemen. Devastating, I'll tell you. You know, you really know what the guys in Worcester went through. Luckily, nobody's dead yet, um, but you know, we hope and pray that it will be fine. Officials say they're not releasing the names of the four volunteer firemen yet, but can only tell us one town of Glen volunteer firefighter is at Albany Med in critical condition. Another is at St. Mary's, and the other two are recovering at home. Meantime, fire investigators continue to search through the charred mess for a cause. The building that once stood here was a farming equipment store built back in 1818. It was vacant for six months and slowly becoming an eyesore. But the historic landmark held a lot of memories for some residents. It upset me so much that I started to cry because I grew up here and we spent a lot of time at the store here. And now fire investigators don't know what caused the fire or if it was suspicious. Some town residents tell me the century-old building was a hazard because it was located on a busy corner and blocked the view of oncoming traffic. And for that reason, some people wanted to see it knocked down. And they felt that maybe this fire was deliberately set. Kelly. And that could bring additional charges in addition to arson if one of these firefighters does die. That's true. We'll have to see what happens. All right. Thank you, Antoinette. Another fire broke out in Schenectady just a few hours ago. Firefighters were called to a Lincoln Avenue home to fight the blaze. Karen Leanne joined us live from Schenectady now with the very latest. Hi, Karen. Hi, Kelly. We're at the police station here where two little boys have been questioned about that fire on Lincoln Avenue today. We have video of them. You can see them uh, coming up here being led away by police. They were also accompanied by their mother to the police station. It was the 9 and 10 year old brother's sister who called 911 after she smelled smoke. She says she thought her brothers might still be in the house next door that's been vacant, some say for two years. She says she and her mother went inside looking and yelling for the boys. Abigail came back home to call 911 and says she saw her brothers and she yelled for her mother to get out of the house and she did. The boys have been given a talking to by police. My little brother lit the fire and it stomped it and shut it off with his feet. And apparently it was still on. So he didn't shut it off very good. So the fire just started. It just it just started all around the place and there was paint all over there and that's how it got created to a fire. No one was hurt, but when firefighters arrived, they still thought children could be inside that house, so they attacked it with that in mind. Uh, no one was hurt. Kelly, the kids have been talked to, and I'm told they probably won't be charged. I was told that they were pretty scared. Okay, thank you, Karen. A truck driver is hospitalized tonight after his tractor trailer plunged 20 feet off of I-90 in Albany. Police say a car cut in front of the truck, causing the truck driver to swerve, hit a guardrail, and plunge 20 feet down onto Broadway. 17-year-old April Nye of Troy was driving the car. She's been charged with DWI, speeding, and leaving the scene of an accident. The truck driver, Manuel Burgos of Massachusetts, is in serious condition at Albany Med. People selling tickets for tonight's Millennium Millions game are having a hard time keeping up with the lines. We'll hear from them after we check in with Lee Copson for a first look at the forecast. Hi, Lee.
Hi Kelly, we do have some changes in the forecast after another string of some very nice days and some mild temperatures. The breeze picked up this afternoon and that was a little bit of a wind to change, blowing in some clouds and overnight tonight into tomorrow some cooler temperatures. You see this evening with the clouds around temperatures will slide back into the upper 40s through the 40s overnight with a few light showers through the area and they should be in the form of rain except maybe a few snowflakes mixed in at the highest elevations. Early tomorrow morning we'll wake up and temperatures will be just below 40 degrees. We'll go for 39 with a few light showers and we have to talk about some rain for our Sunday afternoon continuing and some much cooler weather and we'll talk about the extended forecast into the next work week coming up. All right, thanks Lee. For the third straight week, people are hoping to strike it rich with the Millennium, Mil Millennium Millions game. The lottery jackpot has climbed to a state record $130 million. The odds of winning are still 1 in 52 million, which means you have a better chance of being struck by lightning. But that's not stopping people from spending two bucks for a shot at the millions. Some stores are fighting to keep up with the crowd, but you won't hear them complaining. Uh, really great. Um, we've seen lanes go out the door. I put on extra people just to cover the, uh, the millennium. And of course, we'll have the winning numbers for you coming up tonight live at 11. One man won some money today and didn't have to wait for a lottery drawing. Michael O'Keefe hit the pick three from today's Breeders' Cup. He bought the ticket at the OTB in Cohoes. We caught up with him claiming his winnings. Right now we're just going to enjoy the moment with a couple friends and some family and, uh, you know, um, take it easy and, and have a good weekend. The payoff was $106,000, but he only bought a $1 ticket, which means he only won $53,000. After taxes, he took home more than $38,000. And money was flowing the police, from the police department in Cohoes today as well. The police department was giving out price topper gift certificates in exchange for guns. Many area police departments have had gun buybacks this year, hoping fewer guns will make for safer streets. Uh, preferably handguns, because they're easily concealed, but we'll take anything. Uh, whether they work or they don't work, whether they're rusty or in good shape, uh, we'll take just about anything, just get them off the streets. Only four guns were turned in today. The police department wants to remind you that you can turn in unwanted guns at any time. Today was just a chance to receive a gift certificate in return. A student at RPI is in trouble with the FBI. We'll tell you why after the break. Also, some last-minute campaign stops for the presidential candidates. And if you love toys, Albany was the place for you today. We'll have that story at 628. Live, local, late-breaking with Kelly Lynch, meteorologist Paul Cayano, and Lars Lifrak on sports. This is News Channel 13, live at 6. out News Channel 13 online with MSNBC and NBCIN. Welcome back to news from Berkshire County. A Dalton man is under arrest after police found more than four pounds of marijuana and drug paraphernalia at his home. 23-year-old Jeremy LeBeau is charged with possession of marijuana. He's being held on $5,000 bail. The FBI believes an RPI student was involved in some computer hacking last month. They've seized three computers from Andre Solomon because they believe he was part of a prank, posting an obscene picture and message on the New York Yankees website after they won the World Series. Solomon admits going to the website but says he only went there after he heard the site had already been hacked. Altering or defacing a website is a federal crime punishable by a fine or up to five years in prison. In our check of world news, the Israeli-Palestinian clashes have sent a 14-year-old Palestinian girl to the hospital where she remains unconscious. She was leaving her school in a West Bank village when she was hit in the head by live ammunition. She's undergone surgery but still is in critical condition. So far, 171 people have died in the Middle East from the fighting that broke out just last month. With only three days to go before Election Day, George W. Bush and Al Gore aren't holding anything back. At each campaign stop, there's more theatrics, more celebrities, and more drama in the speeches. Jim Hansen has the latest on both campaigns from Pittsburgh. Actually, uh, the... Al Gore mimics his size. <sighs> size. Confetti showers George W. Bush. With three days to go, the candidates are dialing up the drama, motivating their supporters to get out the vote. Gore at a prayer breakfast in Memphis. It... Wake up! It's... Time to take your soul to the polls. In West Virginia, he paints a picture of Life Wednesday. 
If bush wins, rain and gloom. If gore wins... You leap out of bed and dance your way to the front door. You hear birds chirping on the front, on the front porch. Bush campaigns in Michigan with a hero to Republicans, retired General Colin Powell. On Tuesday, we're going to have a new president, a president we can be proud of. At the next stop, a Pittsburgh rally, Bush hints Powell will be in his cabinet. With three days to go, I'm not offering anybody any jobs. But let me just put it to you this way, I'm glad Colin Powell's here. It's a line Bush has said before, but for both candidates, there's little new to say now. What counts is passion. Jim Hanchett, NBC News, Pittsburgh. After the break, we'll take you to a place where people are hoping for snow, and meteorologist Lee Copson will let us know if their wish will come true anytime soon. Stay with us. Welcome back to the 39th Annual New York State Snow and Travel Expo at the Empire State Plaza. Over 100 exhibits showed off this year's hottest skis, snowboards, and snowmobiles. And for those who just can't wait to hit the slopes, there was an extreme snowboarding simulator. If you missed it today, you can still catch it tomorrow from 11 to 6. And it won't be long until we can put those skis to use. That's right, people getting ready for what we know is to come. And we actually have a few flakes in our forecast coming up, but we didn't see any flakes today. Pretty warm temperatures. You see our high was 60 degrees this afternoon. Cloudy skies right now at 51. Morning low, 35 degrees. So the low pretty close to where we would expect to be the high. A little above for today, even with the clouds around, but not close to that record that we saw six years ago. 76 in 1994. You can see some cooler air moving in. You see off to our west, it's in the 40s. To our east, still in the 50s. So there has been a cold front. The wind has shifted around to the northwest, and we are going to see much chillier temperatures for tomorrow. We're also going to see a lot more clouds. These clouds are going to stick around. And now you see on radar, well, not a big area, not a widespread area of precipitation, but some spotty precipitation getting itself organized off to our west. And this is all pushing to the east. So we do have precipitation in our forecast. We go to pinpoint radar. We can take a closer look right in Fulton County. You see Gloversville and Johnstown and just north of Fonda. A little bit of precipitation, but notice here it's very light. Some of this may not even be reaching the ground right now because we are not seeing any of the heavier echoes here. But off to the west, some more precipitation starting to get itself organized. And again, we do have precipitation in our forecast for tonight and for the second half of the weekend, unfortunately, along with much cooler temperatures. We'll go back to the graphics, look at the wide shot here. And yes, cooler air funneling in behind the front today with lots of precipitation, especially to our south and west, down towards Texas. Still lots of problems with flooding and strong thunderstorms tonight. And another big storm moving into the Pacific Northwest with very windy conditions. Quiet right now in the plains, but this system is going to dive down and merge with some cold air, and there's going to be the potential for some pretty heavy snows in the plains coming up. But for us, lots of clouds around heading into tomorrow. This scattered light precipitation heading through overnight tonight, and then tomorrow the storm rotating around. Very similar to what happened last week, so lots of cold around, lots of wind for tomorrow. Not a spectacular day uh, to be out and about. For tonight, cloudy, scattered showers. Upper 30s for tonight. Nothing real heavy, but just hit or miss showers across the area. And in the higher terrain, we could see some snowflakes mixing in with these showers, but not expecting anything in the way of accumulation. Mostly cloudy for tomorrow, blustery and cold. High temperatures only in the middle 40s for tomorrow night. Still mostly cloudy. Breezy in the evening. Late at night, winds will start to diminish. Maybe a few sprinkles around, maybe a few flurries. Overnight lows down into the low 30s. And as we take a look at the four-day outlook Monday, Starting to get a little better there. Mix of clouds and sun temperatures into the upper 40s. Tuesday, the nicest day of the week with partly sunny skies, mid 50s. Wednesday, the next front comes in and there's a chance of precipitation. Again, looks like liquid. We don't have any snowflakes in there on Wednesday. 54 degrees and cooler on Thursday. Highs right around 50 with a mix of clouds and sun. So certainly not the worst four-day forecast in November, but certainly not the best either. It's probably that. water, right? I hope it's water, the liquid that comes <laughs> down. That would be bad if it was something else. <laughs> most times, most yeah. times. Oh, well, that's all right. With all the stuff we pump up there these days, you never know what could come down. Lee, the environmentalist. Yeah. Does it rain <laughs> something else in your world? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's just liquid. How'd you do with the Breeder, Breeders' Cup today? Uh, remember when we won the uh, Kentucky Derby? That was a lot of fun. <laughs> I'll keep thinking about that today. Okay. That'll be a nice way to do it. We've got some big-time football highlights coming up for you in sports. More high school Super Bowls, plus Virginia Tech at Miami and college action. And, of course, we'll have all your results from today's Breeders' Cup at Churchill Downs. 
We'll start with high school football. The Super Bowl is continuing today. One game completed so far. It's Class B. Hudson Falls and Ravina, a down-to-the-wire game with a little controversy sprinkled in. All the players from Hudson Falls dyeing their hair blonde to this game, either in a show of unity or they're trying to win an Eminem look-alike contest. Not sure which one it is. Here's the controversy. Third quarter, Ravina QB Chris Curry hits a wide-open uh, Anthony Dale. Why was he so wide open? Well, because the Hudson Falls coach felt he uh, stuck off the sidelines. Ravina said he never left the game. In any case, 14-6 Ravina at that point. Hudson Falls answers. Matt Rudine scores. It's 14-12. And then Corey Mayer scores from a yard out. That gives Hudson Falls a 20-14 win. And yes, it said that trick play was a motivating factor. Oh, yeah, that definitely fired us up. I mean, our coach said, you don't want to lose to a bunch of cheaters, do you? And everybody just got fired up. And just went out there and played a heck of a game. You know, we didn't really panic. We knew that we could get it done. It was just a matter of, you know, doing what we do best. Well, there you go. Not too happy, but in any case, they end up winning the game, Hudson Falls. And we see right here an action going on right now. Class C, a little bit of a surprise. Mechanicville looking very good, beating Cambridge 21-10. That game just about to go to halftime. In Class D, Fort Edwards will represent Section 2 in the Class D states. After beating Rensselaer today, 43-6. Another action, Lake George shuts out Warrensburg and Salem over Whitehall, 42-16. Class AA last night, a game at Colony High School. And a rematch of Troy and Bishop McGinn. McGinn won the regular season title last night. It's Devin Fallon from McGinn tying the game in, in the second quarter at 7-all. But Troy's big man is Anthony Chanty, and he had a big game last night. Here he is, second quarter action, 46-yard touchdown run. And then in the third quarter, key sequence of the game. Fourth and goal from McGinn, Warren Lane. Passes, Anthony Rio knocks it down. So no score for McGinn. A few plays later, Canty looking very nimble for a guy who weighs 250 pounds. Watch the cutback. Right here. Gone. 90 yards on this play. Canty finishing with 254 yards rushing. 254, that's right. Three touchdowns, Trey wins it. 31-14. We just all we all put it together. The first time the offense did all right, but the defense didn't. We just put it all together this game. In local college action, U Albany hosting Monmouth this afternoon, and the offense looking good again for the Danes. They've been putting points on the board lately. It continues. Look at the nice touch pass right there. Ryan Roder to Chris Phillips from Saratoga. We're tied at seven. Second quarter, Brian Manigault, another big game. Scores on the eight-yarder, had 119 yards, his third straight 100-yard game. New Albany wins at 37 to 10. How about some other local college scores? Siena losing again, this time at home, 40, 40 to 14. Uh, Union keeping their postseason hopes alive, 37-15 win at Rochester. The Dutchman 8-1 now. Salem's George Beebe set a school record, 272 yards. And as you see right there, RPI winning big against St. Lawrence. 49-7, uh, the Engineers rushing for six touchdowns in the game. On the national level, we've got another matchup with major implications at the top of the top 25 polls. Second rank, Virginia Tech at number three, Miami, but Virginia Tech stars Michael Vick and Andre Davis both entering the game with leg injuries, both trying to play. This isn't good here. Second quarter, this unit's Andre Davis gets hurt after the catch. No update on his injury yet, though he did have to leave the game. We will try and give you more on his condition tonight at 11. Hopefully not too serious. As for Vick, didn't start, ended up being in there for 19 plays. Most of them not very good. Fumbled once through this interception, and this all adds up to a big Miami win. Ken Dorsey here looking for Santana Moss. Goes right by the defender. 80 yards, two TDs for Moss. Kane's roll, 41-21 the final. Also, Big East to action. Syracuse at West Virginia. The Orange get out quickly. New QB, R.J. Anderson here with a five-yard touchdown run. Nice little leap. 14-0 Syracuse at this point. But the Mountaineers lead 27-24 late. Anderson again. Third and goal. 16 seconds left. Touchdown. Syracuse wins it 31-27. And afterwards, West Virginia head coach Don Nealon said he will retire at the end of the season. Bit of a surprise there. A couple more top 10 uh, scores from college football. Oklahoma blowing out Baylor, as you'd expect, and Florida winning big at Vanderbilt, also as you'd expect. Horse racing next, the Breeders' Cup Day. Called the richest day in racing, or you had my picks today, one of the poorer days in recent memory. Top race of the day, of course, the classic. The field this year, including Albert the Great, Unin' Drop Kid, and Pusaichi Pegasus in his last race. There's our old buddy Tom Durkin with the stretch call. Now, 
beating Giants Causeway Captain Steve was third, Fusaichi Pegasus sixth. Here's a look at the rest of the winners in the eight-race Breeders' Cup card from Churchill Downs. Two long shots in the first two races, Spain in the Distaff and Caressing in the Juvenile Philly. Uh, then the favorite in the next two, War Chant in the Mile, ridden by Gary Stevens, and Kona Gold, ridden by Alex Solis in the Sprint. In the Philly Mayor's Turf, Jerry Bailey and Perfect Sting winning. And in Juvenile for two-year-olds, Jerry Bailey again with Macho Uno and in the Turf, the Irish bred Kalanisi winning it. So hopefully some of you out there won. Afternoon hockey, the New Jersey Devils hosting the LA Kings. This is a good highlight for LA Kings fans anyway. Joseph Stemple with the uh, one-timer from Ziggy Palfi. Kings end up beating New Jersey uh, two to one was the final. And as you expect, Tiger Woods at the top of the leaderboard in the PGA Tour. Uh, he and VJ Singh going into the final play tomorrow on, at the uh, PGA Tour Championship. So your luck not quite as good as Mr. O'Keefe from Cahos. Who I, no, I should have maybe followed him and <laughs> yeah. see what he bet on. Next time? Yeah. All right, thanks, Lars. We're back with a last look at the forecast, plus toys, toys, and more toys. Stay with us. Finally tonight, folks have the chance to get a jump start on their Christmas shopping today. The Albany Polish Community Center was packed with toys and collectibles for the Northland Toy Show. Ninety tables were filled with items that were for sale or trade. This was the show's 30th year. Can you believe it's almost time for Christmas? Thanksgiving first. Coming. Well, yeah, hey, I know, but if you take a trip to the mall, you'd never know. Right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. They're already out in full force, mm -hmm. and uh, the weather's starting to feel at least a little more like Christmas because the second half of the weekend is going to be much cooler than what we saw today, starting tonight with some scattered showers, maybe some flakes in the hills, and it'll be chilly for your Sunday, chilly on your Monday, and it starts to warm up nicely for Election Day into the 50s with more sunshine. All right. Thanks, Lee. Okay. And that'll do it for us. We'll see you back here at 11. Tonight.